The drone industry is currently experiencing rapid changes largely due to the increased focus on autonomous flights and AI-powered functions. Major companies like Skydio, DJI, and Autel are developing advanced technology for automated flight, sophisticated collision avoidance systems, and even a drone mesh network for synchronized tasks. These developments appear to minimize the role of a drone pilot. This raises an important question. Are drone pilots becoming irrelevant? Just as the title implies, are drone pilots going to become irrelevant? All these buzzwords and talks of AI and ML replacing our jobs floating amongst the drone pilot forums and several influential figures in the space are becoming concerning. So within this video, we're going to talk about the what, the how, and the why I firmly believe that drone pilots are not going to become irrelevant. More or less, they're going to play an essential role as this technology continues to evolve. So stay tuned to learn more. Let's first talk about the what in how the drone industry is going to evolve. Primarily, we're gonna be focusing on the large corporations at hand that are leading the charge for rapid development and innovation within the space. On the hardware side, companies like Autel, DJI, and several other manufacturers within this space are packing their drones full of tech. With advanced systems like collision avoidance detection, AI features for spotting personnel and objects, and even fully autonomous drone-in-the-box solutions, we're seeing a large push and in innovation on the hardware side. So why is there such a large focus in what feels like these companies creating fully autonomous systems? Well, ease of use and simplicity is essentially what they're going for. For a lot of you that have been in the industry for over five years, know all too well how easy a drone is to pick up and fly today. Whereas, Back then, reliability was a huge question mark. With systems five years ago, you'd throw it up in the air and pray to God that it would come back to you. With not really reliable GPS systems, pretty sketchy batteries that were going into these drones, and essentially jerry-rigged configurations of different payloads, putting a drone in harm's way or really putting a drone up to the task wasn't really a viable solution, as it was really just a, an experimentation of the hardware at the time. So today in 2023, we have some of the most reliable systems in the market that you can go to your local Best Buy or whatever electronic store is nearby you, spend under a thousand dollars and have a system that you can put up to the task of basically completing whatever you need it to complete. Obviously, side noting with the different payloads that exist for thermography, LiDAR, methane detection, whatnot. But really, anybody can go and pick up a drone today and fly it without ever having prior experience. All the systems are pretty much automated, they're touch and go, and there really isn't much learning that needs to be done. At least, that's what you think. So essentially, the easier a system can be picked up and put into operation, the faster that companies and organizations are going to be implementing drones into their programs. And it's one of the biggest reasons why all of these hardware companies are trying to make their drones dummy proof. Obviously at the end of the day, it's money in the pocket of the hardware manufacturers. If they can put a drone in everybody's hands, they're gonna do that. It makes anybody capable of flying a drone, which sounds like it's gonna cut a lot of the costly experts out of the industry in the eyes of a businessman. But that's the key word here. In the eyes of a businessman, is only a fraction of the pie. And what I mean by that is we know that it takes an expert to implement all of these systems. This trade of the knowledge and experience of being able to take a drone, run it through its task, capture the data that needs to be captured, and put it into a fully operational workflow that these companies are essentially relying on. So just because all of these AI and ML features exist within drones does not render a pilot fully useless. Now, shifting to the software side of the industry, this is where a lot of the innovation has taken place and is one of the biggest concerns for drone pilots, even myself to an extent. Companies like QII, Airworks, Solvi, and Raptor Maps have invested significant amounts of money into developing their AI and ML algorithms. Well, over time, the traditional methods of capturing, inspecting, and analyzing data out in the field, no matter what industry that was in, required a significant amount of time, training, and knowledge of not only the equipment at hand, and I'm taking drones out of the picture here, but also the knowledge of what these systems are used for and how they play an important role in day-to-day -day lives and operations of large corporations, even on the small side too. So as AI and ML have become more prevalent within the technology world, a lot of companies are shifting over to software to help automate a lot of those tasks of actually doing the inspection and analysis of the data, which is why companies like QII, Airworks, and Raptor Maps 
are becoming so big within the industry as they're allowing to automate a lot of these tasks, make it a whole lot simpler to use, and ultimately save a lot of time and money on the company side. Well, Dylan, this sounds like it's going to displace a lot of pilots in the industry, right? Well, yes, but also no. And I'll explain that here shortly. Taking the business plan into consideration here, large corporations love to implement computers into the role of what a human used to have. However, that's not always the simplest play here. Let us now talk about the how of why drone pilots are not gonna become irrelevant. In order for all of these advanced systems to work effectively and efficiently, they need to be trained properly. And the only way for these systems to be trained properly is to have an excellent knowledge of the data that's going to be implemented and interpreted by the algorithms themselves. And who's gonna be able to do that? Well, the experts in the field, the guys that have actually been out there doing the work, capturing the data, analyzing it themselves, painstakingly by hand and can essentially do it in their sleep. Essentially you need a subject matter expert in thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of samples of data sets that has been replicated by them in a manner for all of these algorithms to be trained properly. Okay, Dylan, well, that sounds like only experts are going to be able to keep their jobs. What about someone like myself who is brand new to the industry and wants to dive into it, right? That's a great question. But before I answer that, let me answer another question that I didn't answer about if AI and ML are going to displace workers. For very simple tasks that have a lot of repetition, yes, those workers will be replaced with systems like Skydio with the drone in the box solution for doing bridge inspections or doing progress updates on construction or mapping out solar fields to track PV cells. Yes, those jobs will be replaced over time by a fully autonomous system with full BV loss implementations of these drones. However, there is still some time before that's actually gonna happen. But the key word here is the repetitive task, right? What's the purpose of sending somebody out, going and doing the exact same task over and over and over again, when you can automate that with a drone. It's going to take the tasks that require an immense amount of detail and care to be performed by an expert in the field in order to get an actual good data set. Dylan, this still sounds like experts are gonna be the only ones that have jobs in the future. I want to get into it, I'm brand new, I just got my part 107. How can I become one of those experts that get those jobs? The simplest answer that I can give you is education and training. Experts did not become experts overnight. Additionally, they leveraged the tools that they had at hand when they first started in the industry, and then they adapted to the change and evolution of technology over time to get to the point where they are now. Experts are still students as well. They don't just stay at the top because they're the experts. They're the experts because they continue to experiment and learn and change their craft over time to evolve with the changing times. So essentially you either need to accept that technology is evolving and jump on ship with it, or you can sit back and complain about how all of these systems are gonna change your job and get left behind. It's a harsh thing to say, but it's the ugly truth of technology. And most of you should know that by now. This brings us to our last point of why good drone pilots are not becoming irrelevant. Why would a company hire a drone pilot when they could just rely on AI and ML that exists today and is getting better and better by the day. Why would a company hire an expert to implement a system into their workflow? Well, any smart company would want it to be done correctly the first time in order to protect their investment. The same concept applies to being a drone pilot within the industry. And I'm gonna break it into four basic principles that you should follow in order to actually get into the industry and hopefully one day become one of those experts. First and foremost, education. And I cannot iterate this enough. As the drone industry continues to evolve at the accelerated rate that we're experiencing right now, it's imperative to stay up to date with the latest technology and advancements that are happening. Whether it's on the hardware or software side, it's up to you to keep up to date. Otherwise, like I said, you're gonna get left behind. There is a lot of innovation that's happening in this space. There's a lot of education to be had and there's a lot of opportunities that you can take part of to get all of this education. A lot of it is out there for free, some of it is paid, which again, there's so many different opportunities out there. So it's not like you have to fork out tens of thousands of dollars to learn it. It's just a matter of putting yourself out there, finding the resources yourself and joining communities to engage. The second principle that I can advise is experimentation. Just like educating yourself on the different software and hardware that is coming out and exists today, you also need to be able to experiment with it. There's a lot of free betas 
that are coming out for different softwares. And I think that has been one of the biggest advantages that a lot of companies have been pushing is the access to free public betas rather than putting it behind a paywall. They're just giving access to you for free. And I think it's great. I think it allows you to test out all this new technology. For one, I think the nerf technology is going to impact the industry in such a large way in the coming months that I think you guys should definitely pay attention to it. And I'm going to be making a video about it here in the future as the last four months, there has been some crazy changes to the technology. But like I said, that is just one of the pieces of the puzzle of being part of the evolution and change that's going on. I'm keeping myself up to date because I need to. If I'm in a position to help inform and educate people, I need to be educated myself. And I say you do the same thing too and play with a lot of the software innovations that are coming to the industry for free. And to add to the experimentation, there's also a lot of free webinars that you can join. Companies like Drone Deploy, Airworks, QII. There's several other influencers in the space as well that are putting on these free webinars to showcase new products, whether it's on the hardware or software side that's coming out, even new concepts. There's a lot to learn. So being part of the experimentation, whether it's your own or somebody else's, is also a way to delve into this industry and just become a part of it. The third principle that I can talk about is being an educator. And no, I'm not talking about building an education platform like what I'm doing over at Pilot Byte or putting out YouTube videos, or teaching in schools and universities. I mean being an educator to your clients, right? Taking those first two key principles of being educated on the subject matter that you're trying to get good at or trying to become an expert at, as well as experimenting, take those two pieces of the puzzle, take that for yourself, and then be able to educate your client on what your capabilities are, whether it is leveraging AI ML systems or a workflow that you have discovered just by doing research and trying it out, right? You never know what capabilities you have until you actually experiment with it, teach yourself it, and then be able to educate your client on that exact same principle or whatever it may be that you're trying to sell to them because they're relying on you for your expertise. You can't just expect your client to know everything. So being able to be an educator yourself, to teach them the value proposition behind what your services can do for them, it's gonna set you apart within the industry. And I highly suggest taking advantage of a lot of the resources that exist out in the market in order for you to do that. And probably the last principle that I can give to you is asking questions and networking. As simple as it sounds, it's probably one of the most important and easiest things that you can do. There's a lot of discussion that happens within my YouTube videos, on the Facebook groups that I'm involved in, even on LinkedIn. There's a lot that you can pick up and learn from other people. And honestly, everyone in the drone industry is so great. There's a lot of people that are open in sharing their experiences and their workflows and everyone's learning off of each other. So if there's an industry that sparks your interest, whether it's in oil and gas or thermography or photogrammetry and mapping, you're gonna find somebody out there that's an expert within that field. Honestly, I would just suggest reaching out to them because people love talking about what they love to do. And whether it's a hobby or it's a profession, if they're good at it and they're able to actually teach you about it, they're gonna love to talk to you about it. You'd be surprised at how much you can learn for very little, if not no effort at all. And I think the best part about this fourth principle of reaching out, asking questions and connecting with people is growing the community, right? The only way for industries to succeed and prosper is through community, is through vested interest of everybody that's involved. Really the biggest takeaway that I can give to you for this video is you just need to accept the changes that are happening. We live in a world full of technology especially being in the drone space, there's a lot of innovation and change that's happening. So you need to embrace it. So if you wanna take a look at some of the hardware and software companies that I mentioned within this video, check out some of the links in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video and found it insightful, please be sure to give it a like. If you wanna see more from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. And if you wanna continue the conversation, drop a comment down below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.